the Mega Dungeon Stonehill is the topic for this video. And um, I've got the first book right here, Stonehill Dungeon, Down Night Haunted Halls. This is the first uh, half of the dungeon. And obviously this is going to be a video uh, for, and it's going to have a lot of spoilers in it. Um, so if you plan on playing it at some point, don't watch it. Um, and here's the second half of it, um, Into the Heart of Hell. So hopefully you're maybe interested in, in picking it up or want more information about it. And hopefully this video will help you. So um, this is about 100, 130 pages, uh, roughly of meat of the uh, of the first part of the Mega Dungeon. It's written by Michael Curtis, and it's for Labyrinth Lord. But of course it could be used for any old school OSR type game. But it is formatted for Labyrinth Lord, and since that's my, my basic D&D game of choice, I'm... I'm good to go, okay? So just from the back of it, let's read here what it has to offer just in the first half. Now, rem remember that. 700 rooms, encounter more than 40 new monsters, and discover 18 mysterious new magical items. Um, so that's just in the first half. The second half has 600 rooms. Um, it's got 70 unique monsters uh, and 13 new magical items. And as well, of course, it has the, the finale of the... Stonehill uh, dungeon. So, Stonehill is a true dungeon. It was uh, an ancient prison where a terrible ruler decided to uh, throw all his criminals uh, far away from his land and make them build their own prison. Um, whoever whoever worked got food. Whoever didn't work didn't get food. And um, you know whoever didn't work got beaten and. The, the, uh, the wardens and the security there at the prison of Stonehill pretty much let them run Stonehill. And so, um, you know, you have groups that band together, delve deeper. It's almost like, to me, it's almost like a prison moria where they delve, they, they delve deeper and deeper. And they uncovered, um, you know, humanoids that have already, you know, that live underneath the ground, subterranean humanoids and creatures and monsters. They opened up, you know, natural caves and so on and so forth. And um, years later, once Stonehill had, you know, was, was thriving, um, the the great ruler was, uh, well, he's not great, he's an asshole, but um, the ruler was overthrown and uh, Stonehill was liberated, but they were amazed at how many people didn't come out of Stonehill. In essence, you had generations of people who had, um, lived in Stonehill and it was their home and they became accustomed to it. So it's a dungeon of a true dungeon, a true prison, but with, um, you know, obviously it goes up to, it's, it's really, I'm talking with the surface level, you've got 11 levels uh, with 10 of those being underneath the ground. And so each one of those levels um, kind of has a different theme going about it. I mean, it does. Um, and, as it gets further and further down, it starts to get slightly stranger. Obviously, the deeper that uh, the prisoners, the inmates, and monsters and whatever was down there or came flocking to Stonehill, they delved deeper and deeper. It got stranger and stranger. So you have just a, a degenerated group of, of inmates, monsters, and uh, really a civilization almost underneath the ground in Stonehill. Um, and obviously, that that you know, there's many treasures down there, um, valuables, weapons, magical items, armors. And so adventuring parties like to go and try to uh, uh, reclaim Stonehill or see what they can find in Stonehill. And, of course, what they're going to find is um, unbelievably difficult uh, traps, crazy monsters, insane uh, uh, inmates, prisoners. And um, the real spoiler, and again, hopefully you're not, you're not going to play this, the real spoiler um, and hopefully my group isn't watching this, is that there is a being that thrives off kind of misery and um, the decay of Stonehill, the, the fear, all the emotions. It's a, it's a, it's a being and that, that feeds off that. And so it has become, well, it, normally they're slightly uh, uh, mundane, kind of a normal dimensional creature. This one has become large, big, bloated, a massive thing of just ever churning out uh, pain and misery. And so it dwells within Stonehill, and it is a catalyst force for other monsters to come into Stonehill to change the environment, to change the creatures, um, the monsters and the inmates and 
all of the inhabitants of Stonehill. So it's just a malignant force at the bottom of Stonehill. And um, it, it does change it into somewhat, I would say they were gonzo at some sections of this, uh, the, the dungeon, but not too crazy. And it all makes sense, obviously, within the, uh, I would say, kind of the, the, the plot of Stonehill. Um, but that's what's the thing that's great about this dungeon is that there's so much to it. Um, you could get so much gameplay out of. Of course, I'll be talking about that, you know, towards the end. That that main storyline may never even you may you could throw that out the out, out the window and not use it. Or of course, I, I would use it. I think it's very good. But um, there's just so much going on with these two books, and I've literally only I'm still in this book, been playing for a year. Now, granted, you know, some people get to play a lot more. I don't get to play as much. But we've been able to truck through it, and we've had tons of, of, of fun with it. So um, as my first Mega Dungeon uh, experience running it, uh, it's absolutely fantastic. It's easy for me to run it, and I'll explain why when I show you how it's set up. And it is a lot of the stuff is kind of left up to me to describe. So it's kind of – there's a lot to it. Um, some of the the, pas- the the passages for each room and stuff might be very small sentence. And sometimes I have to – uh, do that uh, that DM uh, thing and kind of you know flesh it out myself. So it gives me the opportunity to have something very quick that I can read and see what's in that room, um, and then at the same time I can make it my own. But the thing that's really one of the things that's really good about it is just the the condensedness of it within those 130 pages. You have to think 130 pages in 700 rooms. So how is that accomplished? And the way that that's accomplished is pretty much through the one-page dungeon system, whatever you want to call it. So I'll, I'll show you a little bit here. And unfortunately, I don't have a fancy camera or something hookup where I can show you close-up pictures, nor do I have the expertise to show you, you know, um, you know, pictures that can pop up. So here's a great example. And this is one of the first, the surface level. So what it's going to do is it's going to show you a master map, okay? So this is a master map of the surface level, all right? And so it's going to have um, this, like this has your map legend, and then this has... All the surface level, see, look how, that's one thing that's great about it is it, what's going to show you is how efficient it is. Stonehill is an extremely efficient mega dungeon. So right here, this is all the stat blocks for all the creatures that are on the surface level that you would encounter, okay? So you can see these are split up into two. So on your next page, what you're going to have is, you're going to have, well, the next two pages, you're going to have a brief description of that next square, That ne- I call them quadrants. Um, so this is level 0A, the canyon east. So it's going to tell you an overview, the population, and then special notes about that section of the dungeon, as well as important NPCs, maybe monsters, magical items. Um, and so then you'll get to the, this is the, the actual, the way the layout is. So this is two pages. So if you were to print this out, it'd be front and back, obviously. So here's the that one quadrant that's on the east side. And it's going to have your wandering monsters, nighttime hour checks, the legend for the, the map, key features here for the map, special notes maybe, and then this is it right here, magical items, so that's that page, and then from 1 to 17, so 17 different um, uh, listings here, this is all the numbered rooms and uh, locations here on for this map, okay? So I'll read just one of them, Um, and this is one that's repeated several times on this, remains of a stone wall, ruined timbers, thick growths of weeds, empty, easy. Here's another one. Plain stone room uh, bathed in red glow. The red glow is from a fire beetle devouring a mountain goat kid here. It will react aggressively if dis- disturbed. And of course, like I said, the stats are right here for that critter. So that's it. And now we go on to the next quadrant, which is going to be that western side of the canyon. Again, there's your two pages. And then here's your, your map with your, your room listing. So, um, very easy, very easy to do. And it continues on like that all throughout. Um, and you will get some spot art here and there. Like I said, it's not, it can't fill up. It's got to be very efficient. So it doesn't fill up with a whole bunch of art. And there's so many rooms and stuff that it, it would just really bloat this book up. I'd love to see a bunch of art in it, but it's more efficient than it is um, pretty, I guess I should say. So level one of it, um, you can see, it just continues on like that, page after page. The, um, the descriptions are good, the map is well uh, made, and it's got everything you need within these two pages for that quadrant. So um, so if we look at level one, uh, the first level of Stonehill, you're going to have your master map. It's going to show you your four quadrants. So there's all your maps there, and again, all the monsters that you'll find on level one. 
So if you're playing this on virtual tabletop on roll 20, what I do is I go and I make tokens for all these critters here. Okay. And you'll see these again in other levels. So it's not like you're making, you're sure you'll make some that you probably won't use again, but you will use a lot of these over and over again throughout Stonehill. So uh, again, the overview, the population, the dungeon notes, and then, uh, you know, new spells or magical items. And there it is. And it continues on and on and on and on like that. Um, it lists, obviously, uh, the, the loot that you find and, you know, whatever cre uh, creatures in there. And I use a lot of the, the PDF for this. And what I do is um, to use for virtual tabletop, since that's where I'm playing it at. And for those that use that, have, have, that use that, this is what I do. I take a picture of this uh, on the PDF, you know, for the PDF. I erase what I can and I put my tokens and stuff on there. And that's my quadrant. Now, I then go through the PDF and I highlight where all the creatures are in one color and I highlight what all the loot is in another color. So very easy for me to see where monsters are coming up. Perhaps if they're getting close. I can see down the road because the fact of the matter is you're not going to be able to, there's no way unless you're a machine or data, you, there's no way you're going to be able to remember what all these rooms have in it. So what I do is when they're going into a new quadrant, I read about the quadrant's history, uh, the population and everything about it. I absorb that and I absorb kind of what the area is that they're going to be enter entering it from. Like, are they coming from the West, the East, the North, whatever it is. And then I kind of see the, I give it a good overview. And then whenever, and then that's pretty much it for my preparation. Um, of course, a lot of the preparation I do is on virtual tabletop on roll 20, um, setting up the map, setting up the tokens and stuff like that. But when it actually comes down to game time, I really don't have any prep time. It's already done. Like I've already made the map. Um, and I can't tell exactly where they're going to go. So obviously I can't really prepare myself, um, you know, to know exactly where they're going to be, but I can to a degree of, you know, kind of how they do and you know, your players. So I'll just read it. I'll read it quickly. And I've already more than likely on roll 20, I've already gone ahead and used some tokens for it. So I can kind of see the way that the room is. I've maybe put like a bookcase in there, a rug, couch, whatever. Um, and so I'm, I'm good to go. I know that when they're getting into there, I can see the monsters that they're about to fight. And it just flows that way. The only thing you've got to get for my, on my side, I'm just going to make sure I've got the quadrants done. And it's probably one of the only negatives I truly have about Stonehill. And it's not really a negative. It's just something that will become kind of a metagame thing with your players. And that's the fact that, as you can see, level two, it's four quadrants every time. And that's normal. It's, it's, it's helpful. But your players will now start to know where they are. They'll start to know when they're going about to go into another area. It might change or be different because they know about the different four quadrants because um, they're smart and they're going to figure it out. And if you're playing on virtual tabletop, it's fairly easy to see where the borders are. Um, so that's one of the things that is a metagame kind of thing that they'll know that it's another room. Um, but, you know, you're, you're playing a huge dungeon. It could take you, if you played a whole bunch, many hours of this, you know, it could still, it's still going to take you a long time. It's going to take you over a year, I think, complete both these. If you were playing weekly six, eight hour games, you know, the old days where we used to play a bunch. Um, but with the time frame it is now, I don't, you know, there's rules for restocking the rooms. I'm very lenient with a bunch of stuff because honestly, this is tough. There's a lot of tough traps. There's a lot of tough monsters. A lot of the new monsters are tough. Um, and, I play it with Labyrinth Lords. So you've got a lot of um, save versus, you know, save or die type stuff. So I want them to get through it. So I don't, I don't myself, I don't bog myself down with restocks. I still do wandering monster checks when I, when I feel like they need combat, but there's tons of combat. There's tons of loot. Um, and he's also, Michael's also put out a couple of free and I think a cheap kind of uh, extras, uh, another entrance into Stonehill that we actually used the Brigand Caves download, which was fantastic, and get you into a different area, different starting zone into Stonehill. And so I kind of elongated the game with that, as well as another download that he had that I picked up that expands on several areas of Stonehill, as well as outside, again, another area. Um, there's NPCs. There's uh, a lot of fear involved in it. Um, the, my players right now are afraid to go to a certain area because of certain things that they see. They know what type of monster that is, and it's something that is not to be trifled with. So um, it's just got a lot of neat stuff going on it, and a lot of creatures that maybe you haven't thrown at your players yet, or is a great, it's just a great creature to throw at them, and it's in Stonehill. And obviously, as it goes down deeper and deeper, 
more hit dice, bigger creatures, crazier creatures, unique creatures. Um, and I've had an absolute blast with this. Um, it's been big, big fun. And um, he's got a great section in the back where it has uh, just like, if you need random dungeon dressing, uh, so he has a table on that. Maybe right here it says, uh, the stone walls here are damp and encrusted with um, deposits, numerous cracks thread throughout the stonework. Or another one, a steaming pile of feces has been deposited here based on the size alone. Whatever left it behind was quite large. So you could just throw that at your characters and your players, and that right there will already start to, oh no, what could that be? And this has worried me. And they'll think back about that turd. Ooh, who left that big turd out there? So um, very good. He also has uh, chess and wardrobes co contents, uh, you know, six pairs of uh, lederhosen. Uh, a suit of rotten moldy leather armor and a still usable shield. So just fun little things to add into it. And then once you're done with this book, you continue on with this book. And uh, from what I have uh, done a, a brief read through, just amazing and deep. So in wrapping up about Stonehill is this, there's been other discussions and I've seen many people ask questions about dungeons now and about mega dungeons, about which one to get and why is it worth it? Okay. On Lulu right now, this is $13 for the paperback version. That's amazing. I've been able to play this for over a year, and it's $13 on Lulu. Um, there's tons of stuff to pull out of this between the traps, between just the neat magical items, and all the monsters that are in there. $13 for the print of this. Okay. So it's just a huge, huge, meaty bargain, is what Stonehill is, if you want a mega dungeon. Um, and then this one is bigger, um, there's more to it even though it's only five levels and this is technically six, but this is, this is me. This is where you start to get down into real, real um, nuts of stone hell. And this is $18. So right there, these two things here could last you years of gameplay. Now there are other mega dungeons out there that, you know, people ask about, like, what about this one about what that one, how they size up. And what I would say is that this one is, is uh, it's just a proficient, uh, you know, ex well executed mega dungeon. Uh, mega dungeon. It doesn't. It doesn't have tons of art. It doesn't have tons of story. It doesn't have tons of um, you know intrigue with NPCs and uh, stuff like that. It is just brass tacks, meaty, meaty dungeon. Um, it can, you know it doesn't have all the art to fill it up full and make it big and make you pay more. It's almost one of those things where. If you did fill it up, it would just be so huge. It would be a huge book. The cost would come down, and actually, its efficiency and its 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 use, I think, would be less in the bid. But of course, I'd love to have more art. I'd love to have art of everything, but you can't have that. Um, but it's there's other mega dungeons out there that have that. They're also very well done. They have that art, and you're gonna play. You're gonna pay a more premium price. Now, you may prefer Stonehill, but the way it's laid out, the way it's so um, efficient, and just how easy it is to run. And so it's just, it's great things over here doing it differently than this right here. That's great and doing it differently. So if you need a Mega Dungeon that can start you off at level one, I'd probably take you all the way up because I've got a character that's a thief. Uh, they're on the third level. I think he just turned level six. Now, of course, we did a lot of extra stuff with those, with those other add-ons. But this, I feel, can take you all the way up to end game towards, you know, the high levels. And you're, you know, you can play it, you know, with Labyrinth Lord or any other game um, of OSR. So it's just got a lot of, um, you know, it's, it's very versatile. It's a versatile mega dungeon. And for its price, and if you want a, a dungeon, a mega dungeon that I feel like you don't have to spend a whole bunch of uh, time setting up, reading over, you know, you know, getting it ready as a DM, Stonehill's the one for you. If you don't play virtual tabletop and you just play on a table with your buddies and stuff, you've got a map. You don't have to, you don't need anything. You just, you just draw it out and figure out your way to, to map it out. Cause you, I mean, hell, you can't map out all this stuff on an actual level, you know, level thing, but you'll figure out your way. And, um, it's going to be easy for you to run mainly because you're going to be looking at that one page dungeon, um, style. That's just very, very easy to use. So, uh, there it is. Stonehill dungeon. It's been out there for a while. I hadn't seen a video about, actually, I've seen a lot, you know, some play tests and stuff, but I wanted to tell people about it, tell about the, the adventures that I'm having in there and that, you know, that I'm currently running this and I think it's fantastic. Um, you're going to have a lot of great, great creature killings, um, you know, all sorts of stuff, stuff, you know, orcs, goblins, gnolls, bugbears, you're going to know all that stuff, that stuff's there. Um, but then you're going to have, you know, hobgoblins are, they're wondering about the kobolds, like factions and um, against factions in there. 
uh, berserkers. There's a lot of mold. There's a lot. There's undead. There's everything you can think. Of. So it's just like a kitchen sink of a lot of the creatures that you find in Labyrinth Lords. Um, you know, monster section are going to be in Stonehill because of the way it's it's created with the different le- levels and the story about how it's created, about how you know they they broke into an area and it was uh, you know it was a it was a natural cave and it had these humanoids in it, these underground subterranean humanoids and monsters in it. So it's able to fit all that stuff within the confines of Stonehill. So um, it gets you know big big praise for me. I'm very glad I picked it up and I've had a blast playing it and it's been one of those things that's actually a uh, you know, it's. I feel really good that I'm running it. Uh, it's, you know, it's it's a self-esteem booster, you know, to know that you're running through Stonehill. Your players are beating stuff. They're getting stronger. And um, it's it's another thing where your players and you will start to really know how they open up doors. They use time management and resource management. You can ramp that stuff up or pull it back if you want to go th- through it quickly. Um, you'll get to know, their players will get to know how Stonehill works. You'll get to know how it works. But Stonehill will always still come up with something new to challenge those players and be different and be original while being so compact and so efficient. So there it is, Stonehill, two books. Go ahead and get this if you need a mega deck. Just start with this and see how it goes. This is going to last you a long, long time. So there it is. I hope this video has been uh, you know, enjoyable for you. I'll be talking about some more mega dungeon, another mega dungeon in the future here. And uh, thanks for watching.